Welcome to another one of our HubSpot tutorials. This is CJ with The Gist. We're an inbound marketing and growth agency and certified HubSpot solutions partner based in Buffalo, New York. Let's dive in. This video is gonna focus on how to create custom properties. Custom properties are great because not only do you want to store data uh, on your contacts and other records that don't necessarily just come out of the box, but you want to report on that data and require it to be captured as, as deals progress and through a variety of other scenarios. Every single HubSpot user is bound to start creating their own custom properties. So right now I'm inside a contact record. This was recently imported. We have Dwight Schrute here. We have the basic information that came through. Um, on the import, first name, last name, email, phone number, and life cycle stage. If I click view all properties, what you'll find are a whole bunch of properties that fall within different groups, right? And, and these properties are a combination of explicit data and implicit data, right? There are some data that we assign to the record and there's some um, data that the record tells us based on their web analytics history, their email engagement, and things like that. So HubSpot has, you know, over, you know, almost 200 properties that just come right out of the box. But inevitably, everybody who uses HubSpot needs to create some custom properties of their own because they can be used in a variety of ways to help you uh, attract, engage, and delight new customers. So I'm going to show you how to do that. As with almost anything, you want to start by clicking the gear icon in the top right. That takes you to settings. And to create custom properties, over in the left, you're going to see this data section, and then you're just going to click properties. Now inside here, you'll notice that there you can create properties for a variety of different objects, Con contacts, companies, deals, products, and tickets. Uh, for this purpose, we're going to keep it consistent. We're only going to create a contact property, but rest assured that uh, the process for creating any type of property for any object is exactly the same. Also, when you're inside contact properties, you're going to show groups. Right, so these are the first few that came uh, with HubSpot out of the box. And then there's a new group that I created for the GIST custom properties. Literally, I just create custom properties and custom property group two. I hit save and now that group is created. So going back to properties, let's say I wanna create a property that tracks the current CRM that this contact is using. So I'm gonna create a property here. And first you designate which object, I'm gonna keep it a contact, which group. Um, I'll go with the gist custom properties and I'll say current CRM, right? Um, and then the description is not normally included in the label, but um, it's something if you hover over it, it'll tell you what the purpose of that property is. This is ideal if you have a large team um, or new employees, just a way to keep it consistent so that as people are learning how to use your CRM, they're reminded of, of what the property is for to ensure that they're populating your CRM data accurately. So uh, we use this to keep track of the current CRM the prospect is using. Um, this information helps us um, uh, filter, prioritize, let's say, prioritize the contacts we um, we want to engage. Um, there are so many examples where a business uh, can sell better to prospects based on a, a, cer a certain type of software they're using, right? Maybe it's a medical billing platform, a loan origination system, a CRM, anything. Um, a lot of businesses, um, you know, have a product or service that works better with certain technology. So it, it, it behooves you to understand what current technology they're, they're using. You know, in this instance, in my business a marketing and growth agency, it's good for us to know what CRM they're currently on. Maybe they're, they're using one we're not compatible with, or maybe they're using one that we're really good with. It's not just HubSpot that we work with. So um, we wanna track this. Next, you indicate what the field type it is. Now, um, single line text is easy because then people can just type it in, but it doesn't lend itself to reporting very well, right? Because it's hard to filter out by the randomness that anybody could type in. So as much as possible, I like to use um, either multiple checkboxes or drop down select. 
I use multiple checkboxes in the interest uh, in the example of product or service interest, right? If we want to track any potential product or service we offer that the contact may be interested in, it's likely that they may be interested in more than one at any given time. So a multiple checkbox uh, would likely work there. In this instance, um, current CRM, yes, while I acknowledge there are some instances where people use more than one, the vast majority of businesses are using just one or really prioritizing one. So I'm gonna make it a drop down select where they can only select one. We'll say HubSpot, Salesforce, Zoho, uh, Pipedrive, Keep, um, I don't know how they spell it, K-A-E-P. I don't think it's Keep, I think it's K. KEAP, -E formerly Infusionsoft, um, Active Campaign, and you know we'll just say other, um, and then we'll also say not currently using CRM. Um, we will sort these alphabetically so it's easier for people to find what they're looking for, and this can evolve over time. You know, oftentimes a sales rep would say, "Hey, we're running into people are using you know ABC CRM often. Can we add that as an option?" So you can always add this and evolve these properties over time. Now I'm gonna hit create. Now I'm gonna go back to our friend Dwight Schrute. <clears throat> I could hit the search bar and search for him, but because I was recently searched and recently engaged with, it's nice that HubSpot will just pull it right up in here. And uh, I'm going to jump in and I'm gonna edit that record. Cause you know what? I just found out that Dwight is using uh, Salesforce. So I'm going to search CRM and that new newly created property just came up and I'm going to click Salesforce and then I'm going to click save. So now it's logged in the CRM that Dwight uses Salesforce. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it is worth acknowledging that while that was easy to pull up, it would be easier if that showed up in the left sidebar. So a simple way to do that is when you're inside here, if you hover over it, you click add to your view. And now here that shows up in here and you know what, I want to change around the order. So now every time I personally log in, that's going to show up here. But what if you're uh, a manager and you're managing a team of employees and you want to ensure that that property always shows up in the left sidebar? Um, there are ways that you can um, accomplish that. And I'll show you that next. Again, go back to the gear icon. And now you're in contacts and companies. And right here, the first option is set the properties your team sees on contact records. So I'm going to click go to properties and this window pops up. And uh, previously I added a, um, a separate section on products and services. Uh, and so because I think that this kind of falls in line to that as opposed to just about, maybe I just want to keep the about like general information, contact information, and I want to use this section to really hit on products and services. So I'll click into this view and now I will search CRM and I will click current CRM. And you know what? I want that to show up first before product or service interest and I click save. So now when I go back to Dwight, <clears throat> we're going to see that in this section of products and services, um, there's Salesforce and uh, here's the other property I created second in order. So now I've not only created a property, I've populated it, I've added it to the view. So contacts see it. One other thing I want to touch on is that you can also um, set properties that users see when creating contacts, manually creating contacts. And I'll show you. So if I'm going into contacts here and I am creating a contact, you know, we'll say you start with an email and then here are the, all these other properties, right? So current CRM is now in here, right? Um, it added that automatically, but a simple way to do that, um, if it didn't add it automatically, is you click here and manage, um, start from default properties. Uh, and because I added those to default properties, right, um, they would show up here. But let's say I want CRM. I'm going to add that. And I want product or service interest. I'm going to add that as well. Here again, I can play around with the order. And also I can require. 
So maybe I want current CRM to be a required property. In other words, somebody cannot manually create a contact in the CRM without indicating um, what CRM they're currently using. Now, in this instance, I don't think that's fair for my team um, to know what CRM they're creating, what the CRM a, a contact is using before starting to reach out to that contact. So I am not going to require that and I'm just going to hit save. So now not only have we created a custom property within a group, uh, we've known how to edit it, add it to the left sidebar view as an individual user and for all users, as well as setting which properties people see when creating records. Very, very simple process. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, suggest we do a new tutorial on a new topic, or if you want to learn more about our HubSpot onboarding and support services, head on over to thegistcontent.com/hubspot. Thanks for watching.